okay so welcome to our lesson today and uh, today it's a lovely monday we are going to look at um, epilepsy so epilepsy is another central nervous system condition so we're going to discuss epilepsy so if you look at um, uh, topics that are remaining to be covered in uh, medicine they are basically few and uh, yeah i think i've tried to do my best to cover as much topics as we can so meaning uh, there's no need to to basically rush will be done soon and we'll cover everything we can talk about hiv we can talk about the few topics remaining then we'll be pro probably done okay so we can define epilepsy as um, this is the central nervous system disorder resulting into abnormal electrical discharge by the cerebral cortex with or without loss of consciousness characterized by recurrent seizure sudden loss of conscious and dilated pupils so when it comes to uh, when it comes to epilepsy epilepsy we are saying this condition affects the central nervous system so it is affecting the central nervous system and in this patient uh, basically there is abnormal electrical discharge by cerebral cortex so ce the cerebral cortex is supposed to give a certain amount of electrical impulses because this is because when whatever you you do or you feel or everything that you experience on your skin whatever you see these things are converted into electrical impulses because the brain can only interpret or understand electrical impulses so you realize that in the cerebral cortex the cerebral cortex begin to give abnormal electrical discharges and then this results into uh, into uh, loss of uh, consciousness or the patient will then start experiencing recurrent attacks of seizures because whenever the cerebral cortex gives abnormal electrical impulses this patient begins to experience uh, uh, these uh, seizures so what can cause uh, epilepsy so we have uh, primary causes and uh, when it comes to primary causes these are idiopathic primary causes or idiopathic basically their uh, their cause is unknown then we also have secondary uh, causes of uh, seizures so when it comes to primary causes of seizures we have said these are idiopathic but it is believed that primary seizures or primary causes of seizures uh, basically are related to genetics they tend to run in families okay and you find that you know, about 70 percent of these uh, seizures um, primary or idiopathic seizures that's why it's hard to pinpoint the cause but they tend to run in families then uh, secondary seizures so secondary seizures these are, uh, are due to uh, physiological defect so you find that maybe due to a physiological defect uh, or injury to the head then someone begins to have uh, seizures so by physiological defects you we can talk about maybe cancers of the head or tumors or some uh, things that are affecting the brain then it leads to this individual developing seizures okay uh, so apart from uh, talking about the causes we can talk about the risk factors so the risk factors or predisposing factors uh, the first one we have say we can talk about is brain tumor so someone having a brain tumor can be a risk factor or a predisposing factor and when an individual develops uh, epilepsy uh, because of a tumor that is going to be a secondary cause of uh, epilepsy because you are able to tell what has caused those seizures and you are able to tell to say these are tumors so brain tumors may make someone begin to have seizures or epileptic attacks then traumatic brain injuries where someone is involved maybe in an accident or some trauma to the head they may uh, result into the uh, cerebral cortex giving abnormal electrical impulses and then the individual begins to have seizures then we have uh, metabolic disorders so metabolic disorders such as hypocalcemia hypoglycemia hyperglycemia hyponatremia and also uremia 
So these are metabolic disorders which can result into someone having uh, seizures. Let's pick an example of uh, hypoglycemia. So reduced glucose supply to the brain tissue, it means the brain cells won't be functioning at full capacity and impulses are going to be disturbed in their discharge and then you'll see someone experiencing seizures. That's why people collapse in hypoglycemia because the glucose levels are reduced to the brain tissue. When it comes to um, uh, the other causes, it's basically going to be the same. Then the other risk factors, it could be central nervous system infections like meningitis and encephalitis. So where the, you have meningitis in infection of the meninges, you are going to see someone experiencing seizures because the presence of infection is going to disturb uh, cerebral cortex electrical discharge. We also have other conditions uh, or where someone has the cerebral edema. So cerebral edema, you know, the cerebral cortex is supposed to give electrical impulses and then the brain is supposed to interpret those cerebral uh, impulses. But if there is cerebral edema, if there are fluids accumulating in the cerebrum, it means uh, there is going to be a disturbance in how impulses are discharged or transmitted through the cerebral cortex. The other predisposing factor is that family history of uh, epilepsy is a predisposing factor itself. This is because uh, epilepsy is, um, is believed to be running in families. So just being born in a family where someone had epilepsy, you could be predisposed to developing her epilepsy. Alcohol and drug abuse. So when alcohol levels are high in the body, the, the toxicity levels is going to rise and once that, uh, there is a lot of toxins in your body, they reach the, your brain, the cerebral cortex is going to be disturbed in how electrical impulses are supposed to be discharged Then you end up developing epilepsy. Uh, we have conditions uh, where you, um, which may result in to reduced oxygen supply to the brain. So maybe a baby born um, with uh, asphyxia, a baby who is born with asphyxia uh, or basically respiratory distress syndrome. So conditions where there is a disturbance with oxygen supply to the brain may, make, may cause someone developing asphyxia because they may experience death of brain tissue and then a disturbance in cerebral cortex discharge of electric power impulse become disturbed. Okay. So basically those are, uh, that is how uh, epilepsy can come about. So basically when, it, when we are talking about uh, epilepsy, just a brief uh, description, you will know to say epilepsy is caused by a process that disrupts the cell membrane stability of neurons. So any process that is going to disturb the stability of cell membrane neurons, it means that is going to result in seizures. So the point at which the neuron cell membrane become destabilized and uncontrolled electrical discharge begin is what is called a seizure threshold. So some people have a higher seizure thre threshold because the membranes, the neuron, uh, the, the, the neuron, uh, the neural cell membranes can easily be stabilized just with a little disturbance, meaning the seizure threshold in certain, certain individual is high. Just a bit of disturbance of oxygen to the brain, they begin to jerk and have seizures. Then certain individuals have lower threshold than others and uh, therefore they are prone to seizures. Okay. So when the seizure threshold uh, is exceeded, uh, here you are going to see abnormal and sudden excessive uncontrolled electrical discharge by cerebral neurons causing seizures. So basically that's what happens in epilepsy. So some people have low uh, threshold, seizure threshold, meaning just a bit of a disturbance, they go into seizure, having seizures, which we call epilepsy. And those are epileptic patients. But a normal human being like you and I who don't suffer from frequent seizures, it means 
um, they, it will take a lot of uh, disturbance to our neural membranes for us to suffer from seizures okay so we can move on and look at uh, the classification of uh, seizures so we can classify epileptic seizures as a partial or focal seizures and the other one is generalized seizures so there are only two major classifications of uh, epilepsy this is partial partial which is also called focal seizures or generalized seizures partial meaning this is just affecting a certain area but generalized meaning the entire body is being affected so we we'll start uh, to look at the partial or focal seizures so under partial or focal seizures we are going to look at um, we will look at the first one which is a simple partial seizure so a simple partial seizure uh, this one does not uh, impair consciousness so a simple partial or focal seizure does not impair does not impair consciousness there is just focal twitching of uh, extremities so you see just someone uh, jerking just the extremities maybe the hands and the legs but the conscious levels this patient is still conscious so in a simple uh, partial fo fo focal seizure the speech may also be arrested so you may see a person having difficulties to speak but there is jerking that you are able to see the other thing is that the patient may experience special uh, visual sensations such as seeing light so you have seen people who have uh, uh, collapsed before and saying i think i saw heaven so it's not that they saw heaven it's just that in simple partial seizures a, an individual may be able to see light a visual disturbance or visual sensation and then they see some light and then they will think it is the angel coming to get them or it is god calling them no it is just a seizure that they had experienced a simple partial seizure this is because in in this type of a seizure you remember we have said the conscious levels is still active so you find people saying no that was not a seizure i was active i was fully awake but i could see light and i think it was the the angel or god who was calling me to heaven so for today as medical personnel be able to differentiate uh, medicine from spiritual things and be able to identify to say no this is just a medical problem this is not spiritual intervention the other thing uh, so on partial simple partial of focal seizures or epileptic attacks the other thing is that the patient can even interact with others during a seizure and is able to remember the event afterwards so that's why you see some patients exp experiencing a seizure but they are able to ex uh, explain what happened afterwards like the the previous example we have talked of to say the patient may even see light and you have seen patient describing an event that they even went to heaven so it's not going to heaven it's just a seizure because in this type of a seizure they can see light and it, they may say they have gone to heaven or see angels speaking them so the second type under um, under partial seizures the second one is complex partial seizures so the first one was simple partial seizures the second type is complex partial seizures it's also called uh, temporal lobe seizures or psychomotor seizures so in this type the consciousness is impaired in the simple partial seizures someone is can still be conscious but they are experiencing the seizures but in pa uh, complex partial seizures the, the, here the conscious levels is uh, impaired and uh, this may uh, sometimes begin as a simple partial and then progress to a complex uh, seizure and here you are going to see a patient uh, having characteristics such as uh, lip smacking maybe you see someone uh, like they want to talk but they want they, they don't want to talk or like there is vibration of the lip then the patient goes into a complex seizure 
or sometimes it will be just maybe chewing or someone just picking clothes randomly and they look a bit agitated and after that they collapse and go into a seizure so uh, here in complex uh, seizure so the complex seizure here, the behavior is not voluntary because the consciousness is impaired. So even when the patient is picking the clothes, chewing or smacking the lips, they are doing those uh, without uh, voluntary uh, basis because here the conscious levels is impaired. So everything is involuntary. So that is all about the complex seizure. Then uh, apart from that we have the third type which is complex partial generalized tonic clonic. So you have uh, had seen some questions saying explain about the tonic clonic. Uh, so you have a complex partial generalized tonic clonic. Here also the conscious levels is impaired and this one may progress from a complex partial seizure then it, it progresses to a tonic clonic seizure so that's those are the types that we have under um, under partial seizures so we basically only have three so simple partial seizures complex partial seizures and then we have the third one which is complex partial generalized tonic clonic seizures Okay, so we can move on to the second classification, which is generalized seizures. So under generalized seizures, the first one that we are going to look at is the uh, is petit more. So is uh, is petit more seizures. So in petit more seizures, the here there is brief loss of full consciousness. Remember, generalized seizures they are affecting the entire body, but in uh, simple seizures, we said this could only maybe affect the uh, extremities maybe the hands jerking and the legs but uh, not the entire body but in generalized seizures it's the entire body being affected and the first one which is petit more uh, here there is sudden or brief loss of consciousness there is also sudden loss of attention or awareness and motor activity so you could be talking to an individual then suddenly they lose attention you feel like they feel out of place or they they lose motor activity whereby they maybe just stop walking or stand still so so apart from that the patient stares blankly in spaces and there is also a rolling of uh, eyes upward so you have seen this happening the patient may just uh, lose motor activity maybe they just stand still and then they uh, they roll their eyes eh, upwards like they are staring somewhere in a blank eh? space so this is uh, the petit more sometimes it's called the absence seizure but it's also called a petit more seizure okay so apart from that the patient may stop doing whatever they are doing and uh, drop whatever they are holding in their hands before going into such a seizure and sometimes this is uh, basically described as a blackout as maybe a patient to say the patient had a blackout and here the patient rarely falls down so someone experiencing a petit more seizure they rarely fall down they will just have a sudden loss of uh, consciousness or a blackout and then they, they are going to stay maybe in a blank space but they will rarely fall down Okay, and you see that petit more seizures, this basically they start in childhood, but they most seize occurrences in adolescent. If they don't stop, then they are going to develop into grand more seizures. So we'll discuss about the grand more seizures later on. Okay, the other type under generalized the um, under ge under the generalized seizures. So we have looked at uh, the petit more seizure, the, the next one is atonic seizures. So in atonic seizures, consciousness is impaired for just a few seconds. So in atonic seizures, the consciousness is just impaired for a few seconds. There is a uh, brief loss of uh, muscle tone which may, be cause, which may cause the patient to fall or drop something. 
uh, hence sometimes it is called a drop attack so the the only difference with the petit mal is that in the petit mal you will see a patient uh, um, doesn't necessarily fall but uh, in an atonic seizure the patient loses the muscle tone and they may actually fall on the ground or even drop something then begin to jerk the third one under generalized seizures is myoclonic seizures so here there is impair, impaired consciousness for only a few seconds sometimes not, uh, not at all, not even impairment of consciousness apart from that there is also brief jerking of the muscle uh, which may occur and uh, this may basically cause a patient to fall and um, uh, this is the myoclonic seizures or sometimes called a grand mal seizure so sometimes it is called a grand mal seizure or a myoclonic seizure so in a myoclonic a patient may experience unconscious uh, levels or sometimes they may not even experience unconscious uh, levels but you see jerking uh, of the muscles and uh, the patient even falls down so this is a grand mal seizure or a myoclonic seizure okay so we can discuss more about uh, a, a grand mal seizure or a tonic clonic because this one uh, occurs in well defined stages uh, the first thing is that uh, the patient may experience loss of consciousness uh, the, 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 there may be a post ictal period and this is a period after a seizure where the patient is just uh, maybe quiet uh, like that so basically this has uh, four stages as follows the first stage is called a warning stage in a tonic clonic seizure so it is a warning stage or an aural stage so aural is a u R A L, so R stage or a warning stage. So this may uh, take various forms in different people. For example, the patient may experience numbness or tingling sensation in any area of uh, the body. So this is the warning stage, and it may also be in form of a strange taste or smell, like the patient saying that I think I'm tasting something or I'm smelling something, which in the normal case there is no such uh, smell and sometimes it may be very brief that it may give the patient no room to prepare him or herself so that is the warning stage or the oral stage the second stage of the tonic clonic or a grand mal seizure is a tonic stage so during the tonic stage so during the tonic uh, stage the patient loses consciousness here and falls into the ground with an epileptic cry so due to the and this epileptic cry is basically due to the air passing through uh, a partially uh, closed uh, epiglottis and then you see that uh, epileptic cry like someone just falls and there is an epileptic cry here all muscles become rigid so on the tonic stage all the muscles are now going to become rigid the jaw closes the pupils become dilated and the head is on one side and breathing ceases which may lead to cyanosis and this uh, tonic stage may last for about uh, 20 to 30 seconds the next stage which is the third stage is the clonic stage so the first stage was the aura stage which is the warning stage the second stage was the tonic stage and the third stage is the clonic stage so the clonic stage lasts about 30 seconds here there is extreme violent jerking or convulsive movements of the body and the limbs the jaw opens up and closes and the tongue may be beaten during this time here there is a frothing that comes out of the mouth sweating may be there due to muscular exhaustion and they may be fecal and urinary incontinence but here breathing is basically re-established after some few seconds the last stage of a, of a tonic clonic or a grand mal seizure is a coma stage so the last stage is a coma stage 
in this stage the patient relaxes for a few minutes and passes into a deep sleep. The patient may later wake up and may not be able to explain what happened. So sometimes before the patient sleeps, he or she may go into a post-epileptic automatism. So a post-epileptic automatism and here the patient may perform activities which may not be able to be explained because he or she is unconscious. So the post-epileptic um, automatism you see someone performing certain activities maybe it could be uh, washing something or saying something or doing certain activities which the patient may not be able to explain because this is unconscious that's why when it comes to um, when it comes to individuals uh, scientists having difficulties believing uh, certain activities that Christians do do it's because of um, uh, these things which can be explained by science so you see that someone after having a seizure they might uh, start saying something like uh, even going into tongues or mentioning something of which after recovering from uh, that post uh, epileptic automatism they cannot explain whatever they are saying and this is basically if you look at Christianity you might say someone was uh, maybe talking to higher or superpower or higher powers basically which is uh, the angels of God or something in those angles so the, you, as a scientist you need to know that these certain things happen and you shouldn't be lied to but at the same time make sure you are able to differentiate what is real and what is fake coronavirus has happened no miracles are being performed so we need to be aware of certain things so here on the grand more seizures if the patient continues in a fit for more than 30 minutes or a patient goes into a succession of fits without recovery this is what is called a status epilepticus so status epilepticus is where a patient continues fitting for more than 30 minutes. Sometimes they may recover but they have successive epileptic attacks for more than 30 minutes and that is what is called status epilepticus and this happens in a grand more seizure. So we can move on to management. When it comes to management in, uh, um, in epilepsy, the drugs that you are going to give are not there to cure the epilepsy, but they are just there to control the seizures. So we we'll start with investigations. History is going to review previous epileptic attacks or basically presence of epilepsy in the family. During physical examination, the patient may present with burns. Uh, or sometimes the patient may actually fit in your presence or uh, some bite marks on the tongue. Apart from that, you can do other investigations such as an electroencephalogram. So an electroencephalogram, which is the EEG, is going to show increased electrical activities in the brain. You can do an MRI, a magnetic uh, resonance imaging, to rule out structural lesions. You can do a lumbar puncture to rule out meningitis. An uh, x-ray is going to show trauma to the head, uh, for example presence of a fracture in the head. So you can do all those investigations. Most of them they will be to rule out certain things except for, for an EEG. So when it comes to drugs, remember medication, I've said uh, these are not given to treat epilepsy but just to control the feeds. Uh, so you can give a barbiturate uh, like phenobarbitone. You can give 180 milligrams eh, three times a day. In children, you give 5.8 milligrams per kg body weight eh, once daily. Then the other drug that you can give is eh, the other drug that you can give is uh, Hida, uh, you can give fentoin sodium. So you can give fentoin sodium, uh, which is 3.3 to 4 milligrams per kg body weight. Or sometimes you can just give a full dose of 300 milligrams. Uh, uh, you can give it once eh, 
a day. Then you can also give a drug called kabam, uh, kabamazepine. So kabamazepine you can give 300 milligrams. So kabamazepine is C-A-R-B-A-M-A-Z-E-P-I-N-E, -E, which is 300 milligrams once daily or BD. Then in status epilepticus, in status epilepticus you can give Valium which is um, you can give Valium which is diazepam, uh, you can give 10 milligrams and this is the start dose or whenever symptoms are present. You can give 10 to 15 milligrams. Apart from that you can also give 5% dextrose 1 liter in 24 hours for energy. Okay. So when you when it comes to management of epilepsy, this can be managed as general nursing management, but you need to bring in uh, immediate care headings in the management of uh, epilepsy. So uh, when you write your heading to say nursing management, uh, you are going to basically bring in headings uh, uh, which you, which are going to be immediate care headings. So your first heading is going to be before an attack. So management before an epileptic attack. So here you say I will nest the patient in a railed bed to prevent falls uh, during an attack. I will also nest the patient in a padded railed bed to prevent injuries during violent jacking movements. I will remove anything that can injure the patient during an attack such as naked wires. Apart from that, you can mention to say I will dress my patient in loose clothes to prevent strangulation during an attack. I will also nest my patient in a quiet environment to prevent stimulation which can precipitate an attack. So these are important points to nest a patient who is epileptic in the hospital because if you nest them in, a, in an environment which is noisy, it may pre precipitate an epileptic attack then they will have seizures frequently. The other points that you can add on, you can say I will ensure the suction machine is available for suctioning in order to maintain a clear airway. Okay. Then apart from that, you can say I will remove any flickering right to avoid the frequent attacks. These patients shouldn't even attend clubs because those flickering right lights in clubs may pre precipitate an attack. Then your next heading is going to be management during an attack. So management during an attack, here you will say I will ensure the patient airway is patent to promote tissue perfusion. So during an attack, you want to an attack, you want to ensure that the airway is patent. Apart from that, you will say um, uh, apart from that. So apart from that, you say, I will not attempt to put anything in the mouth during attack to prevent injury to the patient. So when a patient is having an epileptic attack, you should avoid putting sticks, pens, or anything in the mouth to say they are going to bite themselves. No, by putting, when you put such things in the mouth of the patient, the patient, you might, bl you might end up blocking the airway and you are actually causing more damage than good. Then the other thing you are going to say, I will observe uh, the time of initiation, duration and source of uh, seizure. If it is because of increased uh, noise in the area, it means that is the source of seizure. You need to eliminate that uh, source. source. Then apart from that, you say, I will have a fit chart for monitoring my patient. And the other thing you will say, I will not restrain the patient to avoid causing injury to my patient such as a fracture. You should avoid tying patients who are having a seizure because as they are having those jerks, you might cause a fracture. So when you go to your communities, when you see such, do the right thing and not because that is what you have been seeing. Then apart from that, you can say, I will put a soft cloth under the head to avoid injuries during an attack. So you can put a soft cloth, but do not put the patient on a pillow where the head is too much suspended or raised, that, as it may block the airway. 
so you should just uh, you should just put a soft cloth behind the head and tilt the head a bit in that manner to make the airway patent and then the other thing is that you say i will ensure that the patient is lying flat on his sides to prevent aspiration of secretion so after the epileptic attack is done you can even turn the patient's head to the sides so that you prevent uh, aspiration of uh, secretions and then the other management you're going to say after uh, management after the epileptic attack here you, are, you will say i will change the bed linen if the patient is saw the linen during the attack to promote uh, comfort apart from that you can talk about uh, changing the patient's cloth to promote comfort you can also provide the glucose to replace uh, and the energy which was lost during the convulsions after an attack that's when you're supposed to administer oxygen if the patient is hypoxic so if the patient is hypoxic that is when you're going to administer oxygen i repeat you do not administer oxygen during an attack you administer it afterwards including fluids you are going to administer it afterwards during an attack you are ju you just want to maintain a patent airway which is basically airway itself then the last thing is that you say i will observe uh, for injuries such as bruises abrasions bleeding or loss of function of any body part then after that that's when you can bring in a profenema headings after that you can bring in a profenema heading such as psychological care you can talk to the patient and explain about it, the condition and everything afterwards then you can also bring in uh, issues of observations so observations you can do tpr and bp then apart from that you can also uh, observe uh, frequent uh, the, the frequency of seizures and uh, apart from that you can also observe if i tell the patient is cyanotic because seizures may impair oxygen delivery to body tissue then you can also observe if there is presence of injuries then from there apart from observations you can talk about rest rest is important in a seizure as it can promote healing and the patient may have lost a lot of energy so they can rest to conserve energy position uh, is not so cardinal but the patient can just uh, lie in any comfortable position uh, then apart from that uh, you can also talk about um, hygiene so hygiene you can talk about uh, hygiene which is important because the patient may have sold lenin and so talking about hygiene is important so you need to maintain the hygiene levels but you don't do bed baths because epileptic patients are able to bath on their own they are conscious but you can just do other interventions relating to hygiene then apart from hygiene the other heading that you can do is basically medication on medication you you say i'll give prescribed uh, for example let's say valium prescribed valium which is diazepam I'm sure the patient takes prescribed Valium whenever symptoms of uh, epilepsy are observed in such a patient. I'll teach the patient about the side effects of the drug, the dose, and the frequency, and when they are supposed to take it. So you talk about all those uh, points. And apart from um, medication, uh, you can basically just talk about um, uh, elimination. So under elimination, you just uh, replace fluids if at all the patient uh, is weak because uh, they lost a lot of uh, energy in the convulsions or in a seizure meaning you are going to ensure you you replace fluids and then elimination the patient may have passed feces meaning you are going to ensure that you clean and uh, whatever excretes the patient may have passed either feces or urinating because during a convulsion the patient may lose uh, the ability to control urinating or passing feces so elimination you can basically talk about that and other things only elimination but when you are managing an epileptic patient it's just general 
management because this condition cannot be treated but you need to mention those things and even other points so you ensure that you also read through the notes for epilepsy and understand how it is managed and you know to say this is a central nervous system condition and basically this condition it cannot be treated so this is where we'll end with our lesson today uh, thank you so much for going through the tutorial lesson for today.